You might have heard it said that those who don't learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. Well, Psalm 78 is about learning from the history of Israel's rebellion against God so that we aren't doomed to repeat that same history. There's a lot of rebellion to learn from as well. This is the second longest psalm. The longest is Psalm 119. And if you've already read through it, then well done. Uh, if you're waiting to hear this before you read through it, I've got a bit of a hack that'll help you to understand this psalm. Have a look at the structure of it. There's actually a cycle that happens. It repeats twice throughout the psalm. Verses 1 to 8 is an introduction. And then you have this cycle that happens twice. There's a summary of the story. God performs miracles. Israel rebels. God responds. And then there's some final thoughts. The first cycle is from verse 9 to verse 39. And then the second cycle is from verse 40 to 72. Now, in the introduction, we find out that this psalm presents a parable. Have a look at verse 2. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things. Now, that word parable, it could equally be translated as a riddle or as a puzzle that needs to be solved. So this psalm or this is a, it, this psalm is a parable or it's a puzzle that needs to be solved. So what is the riddle? What's the puzzle? Now, you might have worked out by now that the psalms are not randomly assorted, but they're actually put together with a purpose. Some of the psalms relate to each other. And we see here in Psalm 77, it relates to Psalm 78. If you listened to Travis's devotion yesterday, you would have heard Travis point out that Psalm 77 verse 11 says, I will remember the deeds of Yahweh. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all of your works and meditate on all of your mighty deeds. And then Psalm 78 is a reflection of those miracles. But the puzzle is that it doesn't elicit the expected response from Israel. See, God does his miracles and Israel rebels against him rather than being faithful to him. And it doesn't just happen once, it actually happens twice. The cycle is repeated two times and it's meant to be puzzling to see that. Verse 32 puts it really plainly. In spite of all of this, they kept on sinning. So this is, this is the riddle. This is the puzzle. Why do they keep turning their back on a God who is obviously good to them? And if the puzzle isn't strange enough already, the psalm finishes with an even more puzzling thing. God chooses an Israelite to be his shepherd, the shepherd of his people, the King David. God is committed to his people and he chooses David to, com to be the king of his people. David is held up as an example at the end of the psalm because he has integrity of heart, as verse 72 says. So what do we do with this psalm? Well, like I said at the start, those who do not learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. The introduction to this psalm told us that we are to tell this story to our children and to our children's children in verse 8, they, so that they will not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God. The goal is that our children and our children's children will be different. So I think we have a tendency to hide the sins of, our pre, of previous generations. We don't reflect on the bad things that our ancestors do, did. In fact, we might not even know about some of the bad things that our ancestors did. But there is certainly prudence in reflecting on the sins of our fathers and of our fathers' fathers, because they are very likely to be the same sins that afflict us. So let me ask you, what sins or mistakes of previous generations in your family do you need to be warned against? Is it alcoholism? Or is it some other kind of addiction? Maybe it's a, a bad relationship to money that has been common in your family. It could, have, it could be an inability to rest. Or maybe it's marital breakdown. Those who do not learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. Be sensitive to the sins of your ancestors. So the New Testament also encourages Christians to look back on the history of Israel so that we can learn from their mistakes. Uh, Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says in verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 6, These things occurred, talking about the history of Israel, 
as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. This psalm is here to remind us that those who do not learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. And so we should learn from Israel's past and we should learn from our own past. But fortunately, this psalm holds up a model of the way forward, not just to learn not what, what not to do, but also to learn what to do. The psalm holds up David as an example who we should follow in the way of because he had integrity of heart. Now, you might know that this is a, a rose-colored view of David, uh, but as Christians, we look back on the true son of David, the true Israelite, Jesus, who truly did have integrity of heart, and we have him as our model to follow.